The main variable costs in the painting business are labor and materials. Labor, you want to be around 35, max 40%. And materials, you want to be around 10 to 13%. So when you take your total amount of revenue, total sales, minus your gross, sorry, minus your variable costs, you will get your gross profit. So total sales minus variable costs equals gross profit. And the goal is in your painting business is to get your gross profit as close to 50% as possible. Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more, everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What's up, everyone? Michael Hickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com, and you're listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today, but I still really wanted to get this out because um, I had a really important topic that I want to share with you guys. And also, my podcast manager uh, pushes me on the schedule and makes sure that I don't miss an episode. <laughs> so b- both of those things uh, being true, I have a, a really important con- uh, topic that I want to talk to you guys about today. So as you may or may not know, we work with a lot of painting contractors, um, big ones, small ones, startups, guys have been doing it for 40 years. And I want to take you through a few mm, misunderstood or fundamentals that are going to be relevant for anyone to have a little review of whether you're just starting again, whether you're just starting your business or you're already running a you know million dollar plus painting business. Reviewing some of these fundamentals are going to be very valuable. And even if you get one little topic, one little tidbit out of these things, um, I think it's going to uh, really help. So basically, I want to take you through mm, how many we're going to do. Let's say let's say seven. <laughs> we're going to go through seven. Just a nice round number. So I'd like seven. It's a prime number. You know, it's it's a angelic number. You know. So let's go through like the seven most important metrics that you should be tracking in your painting business and uh, and then how to track them, right? We'll, we'll try to make this useful, valuable, and um, I hope I don't cough too many times during this episode or sniff. I seem to like to do that sometimes too. Anyway, uh, before we uh, jump into the seven metrics, I, the one concept that I do want to just reiterate because um, we I even had a painting business owner who was doing mm, about $100,000, $120,000 per month, and he misunderstood this. Right. So if he misunderstood it, then I think you guys could too. Might might be misunderstanding it too. Um, and that is the concept of getting back on the brush to make a bit more money. <laughs> so you've heard me say it before. If you're if you're painting, if you're on the brush as a painting business owner, you are doing a disservice to your company. You're doing the least effective thing that you could be doing for your company. Your number one priority as a painting contractor should be to get off the tools as quickly as possible. And if you're in a position where you're too busy be painting all the time to even think about work, think about doing the business or work on the business stuff, well, you have one of two options. Option number one is you need to find more hours outside of the time that you're painting. And let's be honest, for most of us, that's not going to happen if we're painting, you know, 10 hour days, five, six days a week. We have a little bit of family time in there, pretty much no time for hobbies, like just running our asses off. It's going to be really difficult to find more time to do these important business things, especially if you're bagged at the end of the day or, you know, whatever, running a million miles an hour. So option number one is to find more hours. Option number two is to reprioritize your time. And what that means is to consciously not paint for blocks of the day where you can actively work on your business, where in your, where you are in your best mindset, mind frame, focus point. So for me, my best working hours are between nine and 12 in the morning. So when I want to do like, you know, heavy work where I need to focus and build and create and write and plan and strategize, I do that between nine and noon. Now, if you, um, if you work best at night, like maybe that's when you schedule it or whenever you have the most energy and you have the least chances of being distracted. Now it might, might seem counterproductive to, not paint for those hours, be like, Hey, I'm not going to be able to finish this project on time, or this project's going to go a day late, or the customer is going to be disappointed, or the customer is going to wonder why I'm not painting right now. Just set the expectation. Like, Hey, I got some business stuff I got to work on. I'm trying to build my business. I'm not going to be there between nine and noon on Thursday, but I'll be back after that. And then we'll finish up on Friday. Cool. So like, like I said, just set the expectation and you'll be, you'd be surprised. Homeowners are pretty chill when it comes to that type of thing. 
So I recommend picking, you know, if you're just starting your business, you're trying to find time, like probably six to nine hours per week, you want to just be focused working on your business. So in the short term, you're going to be, you know, say you're making 50 bucks an hour, you know, gross profit painting. Um, so if you take those six hours, that's about 300 to $900 per week that you are going to be, you know, effectively delaying receiving. However, you're going to be working on higher impact activities that is going to allow you to build your business uh, in the in the you know medium to long term. So, what does that look like? Now, the point of growing your business, or how you grow your business, is really really to to expand your time horizon as long as possible, and to to really utilize delayed gratification in order to make decisions. So, if you're making decisions on today, tomorrow, and you know the day after that. That's going to be like, all right, let me grind. Let me hustle. Let me get as much done. Like, let me just get this job done. Let's see if I can, you know, how hard I can work, how many hours I can work. All right. But that is, that is counterintuitive to, sorry, not counterintuitive. That's just not the way to grow a business. If you want to scale a business, you need to get out of that zone one activity and into the zone two and zone three activities. And that's by consciously taking time away from your business, away from away from uh, painting. And going back to the the client that we have who's doing like 100, 120K a month, he was like, yeah, Mike, this week I'm hopping back on the tools because I want to make a bit more money for our vacation. And I'm like, oh, man, like that's not how it works. Like, okay, you might make a little bit more money right now, but you're sacrificing money in the medium term because your business isn't getting the full you. The, your business is now having you step down to be a painter to, to make an extra $50 an hour of gross margin. When instead you should be working on those marketing campaigns. You should be working on improving profitability across the, across your crews. You should be working on, um, your strategic partnership so you can get those bigger commercial repaint projects. So, like I said, your number one priority as a painting contractor should be to get off the tools as quickly as possible, whatever that takes. And it's going to be uncomfortable, but I know you can do it. All right. So with that being said, let's talk about some business basics. Now, the first one that I want to talk about is the difference between gross profit and net profit. And if you just uh, listen, heard me say that, and you're like a more advanced business owner, like a million plus or even 500 K plus, and I've seen so many guys who are like doing 500 K, like 50, 60 K a month. They're like, Oh, I'm the king shit. Like it's not a lot of business. 50 K a month is not a big business guys. <laughs> Like even 100k per month, like not a big business. We we have guys doing a million a month. Like that's starting to get a bit to be a big business, right? 500k a year, not a big business. 800k a year, not a big business. Okay, there's opportunity to to learn these basics. When uh, Jesse and I went to Hormozzi's Mastermind in Las Vegas back in August, the whole first day was basics, right? And we're like, man, this is so basic. Why are they teaching us, a group of 100, you know, seven plus figure business owners? um these these basics right they're like started out with what gross profit is i'm like we know what gross profit is but they went through the basics we put our ego to the side we listened we learned and we got some huge takeaways so just pay attention and get a couple of takeaways even one takeaway is going to make this whatever 30 minutes going to be worth it for you so first is the difference between fixed costs and variable costs so a variable cost is something that goes up and down in direct proportion to your uh sales to your revenue Meaning the more jobs that you do, the more variable costs there are. So if you do twice the amount of jobs, you have twice the amount of variable costs. The main variable costs in a painting business are labor and materials. Labor, you want to be around 35, max 40%. And materials, you want to be around 10 to 13%. So when you take your total amount of revenue, total sales, minus your gross, sorry, minus your variable costs, you will get your gross profit. So total sales minus variable costs equals gross profit. And the goal is in your painting business is to get your gross profit as close to 50% as possible. Okay. Gross profit is what you're going to use to pay for your overhead and pay for your salary and hopefully create a bit of net profit. Net profit is what's left over after everything else, right? So there's number two. So revenue minus variable costs equals gross profit gross profit minus fixed costs equals net profit. Okay. And we want to really target, like I said, a 50% gross profit. 
and a lot of people are scared of profit. It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to overcharge the customers. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to make too much profit, you know, or my employees maybe have a weird mindset around profit. Money is a weird thing. All of us have preconceived notions about money. We have good, some people have good relationships with money. Some people have bad relationships with money, but money is not evil when put in the right hands. Making money, having a profitable business is, is not immoral, right? With profit, you get to do good. If you make profit and you just hoard it and spend on hookers and blow, like, okay, then it's bad, right? But I know there's no kids listening to this, so we're okay to talk about these things. We're all grownups. <laughs> um, but if you make, if you make extra profit and you, um, you know, enroll your child into an extra dance class, right? Or you reinvest in your, in your company and buy a new truck, or you take your family on a holiday because you haven't been on a holiday in two years, like, you know, within, within reason, like these things are all good things to do. It rewards you for taking on risk and building a successful business, but it also gives you an opportunity to give back to your team, give back to your, um, your community to donate to charitable causes, to, to, to have impact. Um, recently, I think I talked about it just on a previous episode, but I was talking about exiting a business, right? And when you exit a business, if you get a big windfall of cash, like say you exit for $10 million or $30 million way down the road, if you build a very big company, you now have the opportunity to redeploy this $30 million into, um, into the world and do more good and to do bigger things. And that's the only way to do bigger things and to provide more value is to generate profit. Okay. So there's one and two. Now the third one, or sorry, the second one, they're net profit. And so net profit is really what's left over after you get rid of your gross, um, your, you pay all your expenses, right? So ideally in a painting business, you want to be aiming for at least 20% net profit. And how I use that is how I really look at that is on a monthly basis, you want to look at your profit and loss. So if you don't have a bookkeeper, you need a bookkeeper, <laughs> highly recommend, right? You can check out, you know, Daniel Honan at Bookkeeping for Painters. They have a wonderful program there. Or um, more recently, we've started working with Yeti Books, which has some really affordable options, especially if you're just getting started. So you need a bookkeeper and you should have your bookkeeper send you your, your profit and loss statement at the end of every, at the start of every month for the previous month. And that's going to tell you what your, your revenue was, what your variable costs were, what your gross profit was, what your overhead was, and what your net profit is. Okay. And that's what you want to look at on a monthly basis to make sure that you're running a profitable business. Okay. And in that, you're going to be able to look at your fixed costs. And one of the items that I want to look, teach you or talk about today is your cost of customer acquisition or your customer acquisition cost. You can uh, abbreviate that as CAC, co Customer Acquisition Cost, CAC, right? And this is your total cost of marketing and sales divided by the number of new customers you got, right? So if in the month of no uh, October, you spent $5,000 on your entire marketing and sales department. So any sales commission, any marketing spend, any agencies, any ad spend, any flyers, any door hanger say it was $5,000, okay? And in the month of October, you sold 20 jobs. How to figure out your customer acquisition costs is you take your $5,000, your total spend, and you divide it by 20. So that's $250 per customer. Okay. Now, if you take that $250 and divide it by your average job size, you're going to figure out your average percent of customer acquisition cost. So say your average job size was $8,200. So you take 250, which was your customer acquisition cost and divide it by 8,200, which is 3%. You want your customer acquisition to cost ideally to be below 5%, but it can be as high as 10%. So 10% of your total revenue could be dedicated towards sales and marketing, which is customer acquisition if you are in growth mode. And I hope that if you're listening to this podcast, you are in growth mode because we are the painter growth podcast. We aren't the painter. Mm, painter stay the same podcast. <laughs> Cool. All right. The next one, that's three. Next one, job close rate or sales rate. Close rate, sales rate, same thing. Basically, the percentage of estimates or quotes that convert into actual projects. Now, how do you track this? You need to track this over a set period and, and calculate how many estimates you do and how many jobs you close. So if you do 30 estimates and you close nine of them, 
uh, in that period, that's a 30% close rate. Now you want to be targeting a 40% or greater close rate. If you are anywhere below 40%, you either need to look at your pricing or you need to look at your sales skill. Oftentimes it's just sales skill because guys are usually not pricing too high. Um, this is going to come into my next number, which is going to be charge rate. But um, in order to work on your sales skill, go through a sales training course, uh, listen to your setup calls, make sure you're doing a good setup call, make sure you're asking for the job, make sure you're presenting the job on the spot, make sure you're you know asking for the job at the time you're presenting it on the spot, make sure both homeowners are there. Like there's a lot of little things that you could do to increase that lead conversion, or sorry, that's that job close rate. Um, but it's either going to be pricing is too high or sales skill is too low. <laughs> and so those two things are really important to, to monitor. So you want it to be 40% or higher. Um, if it's too much higher, if it's like 60 or 70%, you can probably raise your prices, even if you're already within the KPIs that I'm about to share. Okay. And that brings us to the next one, which is your charge rate, right? Number five. So charge rate is essentially what is the total amount that you are charging out to your customers every hour, including material, including labors. And you don't bill with this. Like you don't, you don't figure out your price with this number, but you can use it to make sure that you're charging the right amount. So if you have a $10,000 job, so you go through your estimate, you're using drip jobs, you figure out your pricing or you use our spreadsheets or whatever, you figure out your pricing. Say it's a $10,000 job. And out of this $10,000 job, you calculate that it's going to take 120 hours. Okay. So you take 10,000, your total price of the job, materials, labor, everything included divided by how many hours you think it's going to take. So divided by 120, that gives you $83, 83, 33. Now your goal charge rate is to be between about 75 and 90 per hour. You can be a little bit higher, but you really shouldn't be much lower. If you're having too much lower below 75, um, you are not, you're probably not hitting your 50% gross profit. Okay. So you want to be between 75 and 90. And this allows you to make sure that your gross profits on point, that you're charging enough, that you have enough to pay your painters, that you have enough to make profit and that you're not overcharging the client. Right? So that's where we want to make sure we are between 75 and $90 per hour. Okay. Then the next one is going to be average job size. So some guys here have very low average job sizes. Some guys have very high average job size and girls, right? So average job size is basically, what is it? It is the number of the amount, the average revenue amount of each job. So if over the last month we did 20 jobs and we did $60,000, so we took $60,000 divided by 20 jobs, that's $3,000 per job. Now, giving you an average job size what your that your job should be is really difficult because it's so different in so many areas. There's different types of houses, different types of painting companies, different types of everything, right? But realistically, realistically, if you're like too much below $3,000, it is just going to be a tough game. Like you're going to be doing a lot of jobs and there's going to be a lot of logistics. You're going to be doing a lot of crew moves. So you want to try to increase your average job size as much as possible. I mean, the guys here who do $12,000 jobs every single day, like you know what it's like. It's great. You know, you put a, put your crew on a job for a week and you, know, you move them on Friday. Like that's awesome. But if you're moving your guys every day, ton of inefficiencies, ton of waste, not very demure, not very mindful. <laughs> so um, what you uh, just some strategies to increase your average job size um, is number one, increase your prices. If your pricing is too low, see the previous points. Uh, but number two, constantly be identifying upsell opportunities and provide it as a potential value add for the client. So when you're going through for an interior repaint, you can talk about the walls, but say, hey, have you th had you been thinking about the ceiling at all? Because like the ceiling, once we paint all the walls, I think it might look a little bit yellow. So it might be a good idea to also paint the ceiling. Now, you're not looking for an upsell just to sell them something, but you're looking for an upsell that they might be overthinking or overlooking, right? It's like, oh, you're doing all the walls. Have you thought about the trim, right? And even if they say yes or no, if they're interested or not, I would always recommend adding on a price for it, a separate price for it on their quote so they can at least have the opportunity to say yes. Because they might be like, oh, it's only two grand to do all the trim. Like, yeah, let's do that. Because when people are buying, the first sale is the hardest, but the second and the third sale are much, much easier. So if they're already committed, they're already in for six grand for all of the walls, but they're like, oh, it's only more two more for all the trim. Like, yeah, let's do that. Going from six to eight is not that big of a deal, right? So identify, look at the house, look at the project, see what things also need to get done that they might regret not painting later and offer it as an optional add-on. 
then when you're talking about it at the at the end, you can show them the price, show them what the add-ons are, they can decide. But then that's not the only point. They can also potentially decide. You can give it as an option after you finish the project or while you're while you're doing the project. It's like, hey, we're just about to start the project. Just wanted to make sure you don't want the ceilings done as well because like we should do the ceilings before we do the walls. Right. So just ask them that while you're there. It's like, oh, you know what? Now that we've already been thinking about it for two weeks since we've committed with you, sure, let's do it. Right. So that is um, that is really important for um, increasing your average job size. Just identify potential things that could get painted and give them the opportunity to buy it. Now, the last one, I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn because it's not a financial metric that I'm talking about, but it is something that's going to impact your finances. And that is, and it's not really one, it's kind of a couple all bundled together, but it's, it's speed to lead. And how many times are you calling each lead? Lead conversion is a huge option. Actually, you know, we can boil it down to lead conversion rate. Okay. What's your lead conversion rate? How many leads are you getting and how many leads are you turning into estimates? Ideally, you're above 70%. 70% of your leads turn into estimates. However, it will change a little bit depending on the source. A few things that you can do to impact them. Number one is you can call your leads immediately, like within five minutes of getting a new lead. You get a new lead, set it up. So you get a text message. You can set it up with Zapier. You can ask me, email me. I can help you do that. Or my team can help you do that. You need to be getting your leads within five minutes. Then number two, you need to be resilient. You need to be calling them many, many times, like literally calling each client or each prospect 20 times within the first four days. Call them like six, seven times the first day. Call them until they answer or they say no. A non-answer is not no. A voicemail is not a no. The only thing that is a no is a no. And it's, it's not a no until it's a no right? Until it's a no, it's a yes, because they opted in. They reached out to you. They wanted information. But if you ever decide, if you like just give up because they didn't answer after three calls, like you were leaving money on the table. So be ruthless, speed to lead. Those are going to really increase your lead conversion rate, which of course is going to decrease your cost of acquisition and increase your gross profit. So I hope those seven metrics were helpful. Um, if you don't know any of those super, super well, then um, you should. <laughs> You should work on them. And if you're, um, if you are starting, if you are trying to start or scale your painting company, I just put together a five page PDF that I think you might find interesting. I'll just like link it in the description below. So check out that five page PDF and, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Have a great day guys. Peace. Thanks for listening to the painter growth podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.